Okay, now we're ready to do the actual repair on the power supply board. Uh, we have our selection of capacitors ready to go. Um, on selecting the capacitors, you need to make sure you have low ESR, high ripple current, and uh, high temperature ratings on them. There is a lot of temperature buildup, a lot of heat buildup inside the monitors. Um, that's one of the things that contributes to the, the failure of the originals. Um, now I say if you don't do the high ripple current and high ESR, um, you can further damage the um, power supply board by using the, the bad capacitors. Um, we have a kit available on our website for this particular unit. Um, if you don't want to buy the kit from us, be sure you look on our capacitors page. It shows the manufacturers with the proper series and values of the capacitors um, to get. It's not something that you would be able to get from a store like a Radio Shack, you would have to mail order them to make sure that you get the, the right time. The ones at local um, electronic stores would be general purpose capacitors and they are not the right kind for these um, switched mode power supply boards. Um, so like I said, make sure you get the right ones or you're going to have much more problems because it can further damage the board by putting in the wrong ones. Um, so let's get busy replace, repairing the board and replacing the capacitors. Um, the first thing we need to do is remove the old ones. Uh, we'll be using some copper um, desolder braid and a soldering iron. Basically what you'll do is use the soldering braid, put it on one of the terminals of the capacitor, heat it up with your soldering iron and it will wick the old solder into the braid. Then we go to the next terminal. and then you should be able to remove the capacitor. comes right off. Um, that's one way you can do it. Um, some people prefer to remove the capacitor and then clean the, the old solder off and you can do that too by heating up one terminal of the capacitor, pulling its leg through, heating up the other terminal of the capacitor, pulling its leg through and then the capacitor will come off and then again you use your desolder braid to just clean up the old solder that's on the board. Uh, this is either way it leaves a nice clean hole to insert the new leads through on the new capacitor. Uh, I say try it out either way find out which way you'd like to do it both of them accomplish the, accomplish the same thing. Um, so we'll just go through here and pull the capacitors off the board and get ready to put our new ones on and revive our monitor. These two in the corner are going to be a little bit difficult because they are glued in with basically like hot melt glue. Um, that's the white stuff. Um, I say it, it may take a little bit of wiggle one lead through, go to the other lead, kind of work its way out. our desolder braid to clean up the mounting holes. Once you clean the holes, they should be nice and all open with nothing clogging them. Now we 
I have all the capacitors. Oh, we have one left, sorry. We have the small one. We don't want to forget that. And that is the starter capacitor for the oscillation circuit. And I'm going to make sure we remove that one. Uh, these small capacitors like this can fail, and because of the small size, the tops never bulge. Um, so it's best, again, to replace those while you're rep rep uh, replacing the rest of them. I'll get out. Okay. Now that we have our board without any capacitors. Now it's time to put the capacitors back in place. Um, some of them come on tape strips. I'm just removing the tape. Um, on the side of the capacitor, one side has a stripe on it. That's the negative terminal. The negative side on the board is usually designated with a darker shading. As you can see on the circles, one side is light colored, one side is dark colored. The, the negative lead goes into the dark side on the board. And when the leads come out the back, for now we're just going to push them to the sides to hold the capacitor in until we get the board fully populated. So we're just going to go, I want to say, around the board, replacing the capacitors. On our website, it shows what the values are in each of the locations if you need that information. Um, or when you're taking them out, if you just write down the locations of, of which value comes out of each location, the values are written on the sides of the capacitors. Here. So you just go through, let's say, and populate the board with the capacitors. And we have them all inserted in the board, and then we can just go through and solder them all at one time. Okay, we got our last one in. Now we go through and solder all of the connections, and we should have a repaired board. So again, take our solder and a little bit of solder on each connection. You want to put enough solder to solder the component, but you don't want to leave big globs of solder. solder connections also need to, you need to make sure that they're bright and shiny. If they're not bright and shiny, it's what's called a cold solder joint, and it's not really making a good connection, so just reheat the solder and pull your solder iron away so that it makes a good shiny solder connection. And one last capacitor. Okay, and now take wire snips and cut off the remaining legs that stick out on the capacitors down to board level so that they don't short out on the frame and the monitor. And there we have it, a repaired power supply board. Let's take it back over to the monitor and plug it in and see if we did a good job repairing it.